Caesars in the beginning. Rome has dominated Europe. And so today when we have uh, kings and rulers and princes and and uh, officials who rule Europe by divine right, and the Queen of England rules by divine right, and all the different kings and princes, what are you talking about? What you know, define your terms when you say the King of England rules by divine right. What are you talking about? First of all, the very word divine, which we today re, re, uh, you know think about in relation to God, actually goes back to the grapes uh, and the and the chalice and the Holy Grail because the Holy Grail was the cup of Christ. And what do you have cups for if it isn't to put the liquid in? So. In the ancient world, a grail was a cup, and you pour into the cup wine. And so in the Catholic Church has a celebration at their Mass where the drinking of the wine and the eating of the flesh of the God. And so when you drinking of the wine, wine comes from grapes. Where do grapes come from? They come from divine. Uh-huh. And that's where we get the word divine, because that's where the grapes come from, is from the divine, from divine. So, you know, so my feeling is rather than uh, condemn someone for something you think that they're worshiping the devil, no, they may be intellectually superior to you in that they have an open mind and have studied and universities, read books, traveled, and intellectually understand that there's a far, far bigger story when it comes to religion, theology, God, and the world, then uh, how, how does uh, how does Shakespeare say it? There are many more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Right. Well, I want to tell you something. I've been around the world many times, and I have seen things with my own eyes and experienced things in my life and, found, and had knowledge given to me that absolutely blows my mind. How much people don't know. And, and that's been my big crusade. And I go out and public and say, I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything, but I want to bring to my fellow man a whole new renaissance of thinking, an intellectually freedom to think and to question, to research, because if you go back into history and look at the uh, what happened to Europe under the divine right of kings, you will find that the Vatican was killing hundreds of thousands of people, murdering people, cutting their heads off, pouring lead into the face of children while their parents watched uh, to, to break the back of the human race to cause people to get on their knees and crawl to the emperors of Europe. And then there was the Counter-Reformation with the Jesuits who came in and murdered people everywhere. We, we've got stories coming out of Central and South America, Mexico, of what the Spanish did to the indigenous people of South America. while well, they were doing that in Europe for a thousand years. So Rome has dominated Europe for 2,700 years, first under the Caesars, and then with the coming of the last 1,680 years under the Vatican. And so, therefore, any any king, ruler, or prince who would proclaim himself ruling by divine right is doing it at the behest of the Pope. He's the one that represents God, which is simply dog spelled backwards. That's why you have church dogma. Huh. People need to awaken to the fact that the whole world is is run by people who are far superior and far more demonic and depraved than you have ever suspected. And they are playing you for a fool by using words and terms and symbols and and catchphrases. And they have built up banks, institutions of higher learning, uh, educational systems, governmental systems. All of this whole Western civilization is a sham. It's been developed by secret societies, fraternal orders. I was talking about this stuff back in 1960. I was giving lectures in downtown Los Angeles in 63 when Kennedy was assassinated. I was on my way downtown to give a lecture on secret societies in the church and when, and when John Kennedy was assassinated. So if there's one subject I know, and that is how world governments, banks, churches, institutions, how the entire superstructure of Western civilization is a construct 
that was put together a long time ago by very powerful and wealthy people, and we were born into this system, and so many of us just bought into it and have no idea in the world. And again, I would caution everyone that your decisions in life are only as good as your information. And if you haven't done your homework and figured out who's running this planet and who prints your money and how this government really operates and how your church or your synagogue really operates and where these words and terms that are used in government and finance and commerce and churches and religion, where all this stuff came from, then you better go back before you condemn anybody and start waking up and doing some reading and studying and educate yourself so that you don't sound like a fool when you're talking before intelligent people. Know what you're talking about. The Bible is, the Bible is filled with admonitions of be able to, uh, to represent your faith intelligently, be able to explain what it is you believe, and, and be able to do it with intelligence so that wise and intelligent people will show respect for your faith and for your God if you sound like you might uh, be, uh, halfway be educated. You know, so that's why as much as I abhor the church today on the earth, I abhor the church. I abhor everything it stands for. But I have the highest of respect and admiration for the Bible and for the concept of God, for the idea that there is a higher divine presence in the universe so to speak, of that I have no problem with. I have the highest of admiration for whoever it is that has created the universe, created us. And so I don't have any problem with the idea of God and and theology, but I abhor what we call today the, the church. It is a monstrosity. All you have to do is if you've got any intelligence at all, if you have any self-respect at all, Turn on TBN and watch people spitting on themselves and falling on the stage, and you will see thousands and thousands of people paying fifty to a hundred dollars for a seat to to watch a show. I mean, that's what the word. Look at God comes. Our word God comes from a Greek word theo, theo or the t h e or t h e o. Theo in Greek was God. So the study of God is called ology, theology. And that's where we get our word theater, comes from theo, or theology, theater. So in the ancient Greek world, they had what they called a Greek, uh, the Greeks called the God show. You go in, sit down at, in, the, in the pew, and pay money and watch the God show, the theater. So today, that's what religion is. It's a theater, it's a show. You go and sit down, pay money, and watch the show, and it looks very, very holy and reverent and makes you feel good all over. And you come out equally as ignorant as when you went in. And 48 years later, you're still going to the same God show and cannot answer a question intelligently. You've done no research. You can't read. You've never thought about anything. You can't answer any question concerning your faith. And so when someone who has spent 48 years, not in your church, but in studying theology, religion, philosophy, commerce, world government, is confronting you with questions, you immediately call that person demonic and depraved, and you must be working for the devil. I'm just saying that if America is going to continue to exist and the human race progress and become something of value, we're going to have to get rid of all this silly, nonsensical religion and get back to true spirituality. And we have, to, we have to take a quick break so you can recalibrate on your side. But let me just say this, uh, Jordan. I'm going to say this in the most complimentary way, that it must be difficult being you. And I say that because if we live in a reality that it's not our reality, not that many people know, and you do. And it must be very difficult to know the real meaning of everything that surrounds you. But when we come back, folks, I want to tell you something that somebody I know and trust told me. The person will remain nameless for security purposes, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And I want to see if Jordan knows about this. But many people know that in the Islamic uh, Islam, you have the, the virgins, and if you do a good deed, you get a virgin. And if you die for, for, for the religion, 
you get a limited number of virgins. Well, that may not be necessarily true. It may be a different meaning that the powers that be don't want you to know. So when we come back, I'll tell you what I've heard, and I want to know if Jordan knows about this. What a fascinating man. What a fascinating uh, program. Folks, don't go anywhere. Jordan, how do we get in touch with your work, your website? Uh, just jordanmaxwell.com. Jordan, like the, like the river Jordan, uh, J-O-R-D-A-N, Maxwell, uh, dot com. And we have a link on our website as well. Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Jordan Maxwell. This is Mel Fabregas, and you're listening to Veritas. Don't go anywhere.